Hey, welcome to the show, the Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. My name is Jeff Gerard. I'm joined by Logan Hallaby, and we're going to talk about your family's finances. Logan, thanks for being here with me today. Appreciate Good afternoon. You. Thanks for having me once again. Hey, uh, this is a kind of a special deal for us because, uh, and the reason we have Logan here is to talk about uh, this topic today. It's something that I think is this brooding um, undercurrent that people are ignoring. A lot of people are ignoring, and I don't think it's getting the light that it's getting. Student loan debt has, in my opinion, spiraled out of control, and we're at almost $1.5 trillion in debt as a country. That's the collective debt of all uh, student loan debt is at almost a million, a trillion and a half dollars. I mean, that's, that's past uh, credit card debt, auto loans, you name it. It's only a, a second to uh, first possession mortgages. So people's housing, right? Housing is the only thing that trumps that. So Let's talk about this, Logan. Let's jump right in because I think what we need to do is really shed some light on this. Uh, we've pulled some notes here and some compelling stories from uh, some of the, the, the leading news sources. And I'll tell you, looking at these numbers, it's kind of staggering. We're looking at someone taking out a, a $55,000 federal student loan and having this balance swell to 300000 I mean, that's like, how is that even... Uh, fathomable? How's that achievable where you're going to borrow this much and over the life of this loan pay down? You know, you start with five figures and now you're at, you know, six figures. This is six times the amount that was borrowed almost. How, how is that something that is okay? Well, it's more of a rhetorical question, but I'll tell you, if you set yourself up, you can avoid having some of these uh, statistics plague you, okay? So really, I think, and this is just my opinion, if you don't go into college with the plan, right? There's Everybody talks about college planning, right? But it starts well before you're about to graduate, Logan. I mean, whether it's saving money for your child as, a, as, as, a, as an infant and hopefully growing a, an amount of money that you saved and accumulate over time to spend down for college or other means. But let's, let's have you chime in here, Logan. What are you hearing from, as a college graduate, right? Master's college graduate. Nice job. Thank you. You're welcome. What are you hearing in the world of student loan debts and how is it affecting people's finances in your age bracket? Well, a lot of people kind of bought into the trap that the four-year university, the, the big name, is the one that matters the most. And so that's what they had to get the whole time. Ah. And it's true, but that's for the bachelor's of the four-year degree. No one really cares where you did the general ed stuff, the, the, the intro stuff. That's all can be done pretty much anywhere. So I went the route of taking classes here locally at College of the Canyons. Great. People seem to look down on it sometimes. Uh, it doesn't always make sense to me because I still get the education. But uh, for a much better cost, especially considering how much tuition costs at CSUN or any of the other. And that's on the low end for a state school. Sure. Well, and you bring up a great point because I think what people do in this valley and the surrounding valleys is they kind of overlook the um, the potential that they have, uh, number one, in maybe going the longer route, right? I mean, the easy route is, and I, I say easy with hanging quotes, in, in the planning perspective. Um, we're going to look at a four-year and we're going to drop a boatload of dollars into that and come out on the other side with a degree. Seems simple. Maybe not easy is the right word, simple. But if you do it the way maybe you did it, maybe not as traditionally as other folks have done it, where in the high school years, you're using a community college format where and a campus where you're getting credits not only for your high school classes and requisites, but you're also dipping into the college credits at an early age. That, in my opinion, is brilliant. And I'll credit your parents on that because I think you were just kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, you were the soldier. They wound you up and said, okay, Logan, go, go, they, buddy. They, they just kind of told me where to show up for the first couple classes. And then I got right. a little more involved on what I wanted to do and to, to learn and to study. So first couple times it was just, all right, you're showing up at this date, this time, and go. And you probably didn't even realize, and, and as astute and bright as you are, uh, at that young age, you probably didn't realize what your, what your folks are doing for you. I, I bet that sunk in, you know, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. but looking back at maybe some of your peers who didn't take that same route, it was probably quite a different uh, go for them, wasn't it? Exactly. And I've seen many people that I know, friends and in my, similar in my age bracket, who have the nebulous idea that they want to go to college and then they want to come out the other side and get a good job. But for what? 
or what do they want to study, how is that related to what they want to do. It's not always crystal clear what they want to do, and yet they're making this four-year-long commitment, and suddenly they're stuck if they don't pass that one class. Or sure. it turns out that suddenly they, they wanted to go to computer science, and as I found out with uh, one of my gen ed classes, that I, uh, I enjoyed it, but yeah. I'm not that good at programming, guys. So <laughs> good thing I figured that out at COC and not three years into a four-year degree. Well, and, and it's the other point I was going to make in, I think, the part where people overlook their local community colleges. It kind of feels like the 13th grade. I mean, your dad said that, and when I first thought of that, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But I hear more and more that it doesn't feel like they're getting the full college experience. But... It's a real college, guys, and it's not the same price as some of the other <laughs> big four-year universities out there. And I think what you what you can do, and you know, if there are any young people listening, I encourage you to be open-minded to uh, the fact that you can take a lower-cost route and not take on these big, big student loans. Because look, at the end of the day, student loans are pretty easy to get, and I'll use the word easy because. You don't have a, 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 the means, you personally as the student, don't have the means to pay these student loans back. So what is the criteria for quali qualifying? I don't know. It's between you and your folks and your financial situation. That'll determine how much. But when do they ever turn people down? Probably pretty rarely. And so walking into, as you mentioned, Logan, a four-year commitment, I'm going to call it a lifelong commitment or a, or a career-long commitment because some of the stats I've pulled, these are 25 and 30 years before people are paying down some of these enormous balances. I mean, 300000 you could buy a small house for that. And what do you, how do you amortize 300000 Over 30 years. That makes the payment affordable. But in the student loan world... And it's a $300,000 a, a small house because we're skewed by... Southern California real you estate. Go. You go to most of the country, that's here. Right. Acres, great big house. So, hey, I paid less than 300 for mine, but at the end of me paying mine off, I'm going to have a house. And I'm not saying that having a paid off house in 30 years is not the same as having a, a bachelor's or a master's degree. I mean, you'll, you'll have to take a look at the two, but at least I know what my, my asset will look like. Yours is dependent upon and incumbent upon the success of it's incumbent upon your effort tied with it. So uh, many variables between the two. And I'm not saying, you know, go out and buy hard assets. Don't invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. But there's a smarter, more, um, uh, I guess, economical way of doing it. And the more open-minded you are to that, I think that's really kind of the key here. Because I, I feel sorry, Logan. I feel bad for the people that go on and make these lifelong commitments with, I mean, and, and here, look, if, if, uh, if, you have a, if you have a child, which you don't, but in the years coming, eventually become a father and your 18 year old son wants to marry this girl wants to make a lifelong commitment with this girl he's known her three months would it sound like a good sound decision without doing any other you know what just just on the surface do you, would you say yeah son go go for it well I will say that something like that worked out for my grandparents 50 plus years ago however it's easier to get a divorce than to get rid of the student <laughs> loans so right Right, but we're, my point is, I mean, we, we, we expect kids to make, you know, decisions. And you brought up another great point in that, you know, if we look at statistically, and these aren't my stats, these are on the internet, you can check them out, credible sources, 70%, that's seven zero percent of the people with a college degree do not work in the field in which they studied. That means uh, someone in Logan's example, computer science degree, are they a programmer? 70% are not. So 7 out of 10 people with that degree are not. Yet, they're carrying the debt for the, the degree in which they earned. So how does that make sense? Education is key. We're not saying don't go out and educate yourself or invest in yourself. But do it wisely. Do it wisely. And it's a matter of not biting up more than you can chew. If you're going to be having this lifelong goal and you're going to be a teacher, great. What is your uh, income going to be? Are you going to be able to afford paying off a master's degree that was required yeah. just to get the job. Are you got to have some long-term thinking? Not necessarily concrete. You're going to be job at this date by this time with this company because they might not even be around once you're done with school. Right. But make sure things are reasonable in terms of what you actually can expect and can accomplish what you want. I think that's sage advice, Logan. And you know, to take it a step further, if if you're really going to break this down uh, into a math formula, or say, you know, what is you know maybe a range that I can expect on the other side of 
of this financially speaking, you know, I'm going to take on X amount of debt. What can I expect with this degree? You know, that's because that's the goal, right? To have the degree so that you can afford an opportunity to get in front of an, a, a prospect employer so you can have the conversation of why you deserve to have that job or why you should, why you've earned that job. So what can a job like that expect to pay you? If you can take that number and then subtract the after-tax amount, because you'll, you'll make a gross amount, you'll pay your, ta your federal and, and maybe state income tax, depending where you are in the country, and then you'll take that number, that's the money you can spend. And then, oh, here's my housing, here's my food, you know, food, shelter, clothing, you know, maybe, maybe a couple of extras, maybe not. And then can I afford that student loan payment? That, I think, is the real question. And maybe it's a reality people don't want to face when they're 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. I don't know. But I think it's the question that, uh, the, the, the conversation that should be had between the folks that are borrowing, which is, you know, the, the young, young people that are embarking on their education. And what about, Logan, the parents? Parent PLUS loans, I don't even have the stats on that, but I, I bet Eric could chime in on this here on the next segment. But the Parent PLUS loans that are being carried into into their later working years, into parents, grandparents, I know because I, I know one personally that's carrying a, a five-figure debt for their granddaughter. And hey, it was an investment in their granddaughter. I get it. I get it. But how it uh, impacted their fi finances, I got to see that personally, which means that there's a domino effect. If something's short over here, oh, wow, we've got to go borrow somewhere else or pull from savings to take care of this. It's not always the... You know, the, the best financial plan going into retirement, but I can tell you that's, that's certainly part of it. And you get people who go to college for a couple of years, year or two, don't like it, get a job somewhere else, you know, f flunk out, whatever. Mm -hmm. What happens to those loans? They don't just go away because you didn't get the degree. That's right. You're still going to be on the hook for it, especially as the parent or the grandparent who signed up and promised to pay it if the, the kid couldn't. There you go. Who's stuck based on someone else not doing things properly? Well, and I'll tell you something else, Logan. I think it's it's fascinating. It's actually shocking to me that some people go into these loans. They say, "Oh, no problem. There's a forbearance program. As long as I work in X sector or for X municipality or whatever job, whatever role, there might be a chance that the government will just say, ah, don't worry about it. You don't you you served your time. You don't have to pay that back.' What does that do to us as an economy? Well, the problem with the forbearance also is that. It doesn't freeze your student loans. It just means you don't have to make the payments for right now. But what keeps going up? The interest. And give it a, say you're on forbearance for a couple of years, you're ready to start paying again, the bill's gone up. Yeah. You owe more money now. Yeah, you could start out with a $500 a month payment. Say, oh, I can't do that on $27,000 a year before taxes. So you put it in forbearance. And then what happens? Three years later, maybe it's gone up 20%. Seven, eight hundred dollars a month, and when it comes out of forbearance, you really don't have a lot of choices, do you? So you've already used up the option of forbearance. You've, I, unless your situation financially improves substantially in that time frame, you you might be stuck. And then what does that do for everyone else when you've got certain classes of people who can get out of student loan debt or get out of the way? Mm -hmm. What does that do to the pressure on everyone else and the system as a whole? Because people the loan lenders still n still want their money back. Right. And now it's putting more pressure on a smaller group of borrowers who can actually pay. So even if you don't work in the public sector or don't use the forbearance, you're probably still going to be affected too if you've got student loans. Yeah, great point. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how this debt, whether it's a student loan debt in your family or it's a Parent PLUS loan, uh, how that can affect you in the later years. We're going to have Eric Halliby join us here on the next segment after we come back from our break and talk about the impact that it has on your family's finances. Thanks for joining us here. Stay with us uh, after the commercial break. This is the Total Financial Hour on your hometown station. We'll be right back. On Saturday, June 9, the Church on the Way Santa Clarita is hosting Medical Mission Adventures, a free clinic that offers medical, dental, and vision services. This event allows those without insurance to receive the best professional care at no cost. The doors open at 9 a.m. on June 9, and services are rendered first come, first serve. The Church on the Way Santa Clarita is located on Cinema Drive. For more information about this event and others coming up, visit our website at tcotw. SC.org. 
If you are at least 55 years of age and have a torn or irreparable rotator cuff, you may be eligible for a no-cost clinical trial at Southern California's Orthopedic Institute's Valencia Clinic. Call 818-901-6600, extension 1525, or visit rotatorcuffstudy.com to learn about a study of an investigational shoulder implant. Call 818-901-6600, extension 1525, or visit rotatorcuffstudy.com. Sponsored by MicroAir Surgery. Instruments. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. If you're in danger of losing your home to foreclosure, you need an expert. Hi, I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. I've helped hundreds of Santa Clara residents save their homes completely for free. I've got just over 20 years experience and a loan modification success rate of over 80%. I can negotiate better terms with your bank and I can save your home from foreclosure. And again, we do this completely for free. So if you're in any danger, please call me today at 661-714-1400. That number again is 661-714-1400. I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty, and I'll be happy to help you save your home for free. Every day after school, children and teens in our community are alone without academic support, access to healthy food and activities, or adults to guide them. With your support, we can provide our youth a second home, support their academic success, and build leaders. Join us Saturday, June 2nd at All That Glitters is Gold, the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley's annual benefit auction. Visit scvbgc.org or call us at 661-254-CLUB to purchase your tickets. Looking for a fun day with the kids? Visit Ice Station Valencia. With three rinks, Ice Station offers every type of skating program imaginable, from ice hockey and figure skating to public skating sessions every day. Ice Station is a great place to bring a group, so ask about our special group rates. Our glass-enclosed restaurant, The Grill, offers a scrumptious array of tasty snacks and entrees. For info, call 775-8686 or skate to the net, www.icestation.net. Ice Station Valencia, right across the street from Valencia High School. Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. This is your place for news, talk, and information, your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. Hey, welcome to the show. This is Arif Hallaby joining the two gentlemen, Jeff Gerard and Logan Hallaby, as we talk about your family's finances, getting out of debt, managing money, planning for your future. And why is it that when you sit and you talk about student loans, guys, it becomes such an emotional thing, right? Because y- you've spent your whole life with your children thinking, well, little Susie, she's the smartest, she's a genius, she's going to Stanford or Harvard or... And some of these... Uh, schools the cost is greater than your first home truly and you might think well that is the uh, the beginning that they need in life you are operating under the old rules now except for just a few i don't know maybe five percent right five out of take the class graduating class of Hart high school uh, and and take five percent of them right let's say the math i don't know 300 people let's 25 people 25 okay. people going to college out of that senior should be very careful about where they go and probably should uh, get student loans because they're going to be surgeons, they're going to be uh, economists, they might be uh, dentists, you know, with oral surgery practice. Fine. Right. But the rest, you're going to get a degree in English and work as a communications expert for a PR firm. You're going to get a degree in communications and work in marketing. In other words, you're not even going to get work in the field in which you earned your degree. Why do I know this? Because that's the, the statistics are 70% of people aren't even going to get it, number one. Number two is, even if you do work in your industry, nobody cares if it was Cal State Northridge, Cal State Fullerton, or two years at College of the Canyons or Pierce College and then three years at whatever school. Nobody cares. I never hired anybody and said, oh, well, 
looks like your degree says uh, Stanford on it. Uh, you must be smarter than the next guy. And then when I talk to you, you use um and like all the time. <laughs> you smell and you don't do anything on purpose with your, with your hygiene or your grooming. You, you understand, you guys, that appearance is the beginning. Just like you wouldn't give me a resume with a coffee stain, but you walk in not matching your shirt and tie. <laughs> or you walk in and your hair looks like you'd, you'd run it through you, you know, a convertible for 15 minutes. And you go, oh, 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 don't hurt my feelings. Okay, listen, I got it and your feelings and you're over it. Next. Y you have to figure out. Employers care about you doing the job. Not what you did 15 years ago, four years ago, six years ago. The pressure you're going to have on you and your children, financially speaking, when they have to come up with $460 a day, I, I mean a month, or $350 a month in student loan. You understand you have to make about 120, 150% more than that. Here's a good example. Oh, my student loan payment is $500 a month. You have to earn $750, pay the taxes, then you receive 500 now now you can pay it your student loans and that's without r accounting for housing food car getting to work anything else in the world that's just to pay the student loans and think of it if you're bringing in 750 a week that's 1500 every 2 weeks that's 3000 a month that's a $36,000 a year job okay well that's not huge money but it's not chump change right that's that's pretty good income yeah especially for somebody in their 20s that's starting out. And you're going to say one week of your work every month has to go to pay for student loans. Another week maybe for your car-related expenses, gas, car insurance, maybe a car payment, maybe repairs. And then you have another week for food, right, for the month. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Food and clothing, maybe. And the last one is for what? Oh, wait, you needed a place to live, didn't you? <laughs> Not including utilities. So you tell me that you can find a place to rent for $750 a month? No. Because the money you were going to put towards investing, you were going to put towards the purchase of rental property, you were going to put towards the purchase of your primary residence, all of those dollars went out the back door to pay for something that had very little value, but you were tricked into it. Oh, Eric, that's so emotionally charged. <laughs> yes. Who, who's going to tell you the truth? Your college uh, uh, dean? Right? Who's, who's bonus slash income slash, you know, matching to their 403B plan <laughs> counts on you paying your tuition? Th their job is to get you accepted into the school. Listen, I, I have kids that went to college. I have kids going to college as we speak. If it means, so sorry kids, you got to take a year off and go to work. I know, but the chances are they may not go back. Well, you know what? Chances are you can get hit by a meteor. So you probably should, I, I don't know, listen. Some of you were supposed to go to college in 2008 or 2009, and your family lost their home, they lost their rental property, maybe they lost half of their retirement accounts. Do you think it's supposed to be because you were born in, in uh, I don't know, 1994, 1997? Do you think, you think now that because they promised you back then when the economy was doing great, you're going to go to school and yet somebody else controls our financial well-being when you are an employee or you work for somebody or work for a company or you work in an industry, right? I don't, I own the company, but I, I don't control everything. I have, we have state regulators and government workers and permits and fees and licenses and it's not me that controls all this stuff. So keep in mind, you guys, somebody's got to talk to you this way. Because giving you a hug and just saying you can do it doesn't mean that when the, when the lights go down and, and we all go back to our corners and that you could, should be financially building up your, your life savings. Jeff, one of the things we looked at is the amount of money people will owe and how it continues to grow. Here, this is a gentleman. Uh, see if I can come up where the story came from in a minute here. I think it was a... I want to say it was either Fox Business or CNBC. This is a gentleman, Rick Tallini. He had $55,000 in federal student loans debt that he took out for law school in the 1990s. Bright future, life was good, everything he thought was on track. But because he, he struggled to find employment, 
pay his bills. He had to choose. Do I eat or do I pay student loans? Right. Now his, his student loan debt has soared. $300,000, it would appear. I mean, now you've got the, you've got the, the debt of, a, a, let's say, a small house, as we talked about in the first segment. Yeah. Uh, but what do you have at the end? I mean, it's a piece of paper. You have a degree. Wonderful. You have opportunity. Do you have opportunity or do you have an asset? I don't know. It's up to you, really. You can still achieve law school. Maybe it takes a four-year plan instead of two or three-year plan instead of six, Or right? Maybe it takes a little longer, four-year plan. Maybe you go to night school. I have a friend of mine uh, going to night school as we speak because he has a family. Yeah. Don't fall into this trap that the only place knowledge is kept is in that ivory covered brick institution with these amazing manicured lawns where even the gardener has a better pension plan than you'll ever have. <laughs> right? It's true. Don't fall into those yeah. tricks. Well, and you've made this point for a long time, Arif, and I don't think you said it outright, is it doesn't matter in most cases how long it took to obtain that degree. Let's say it still is a Stanford or it's a, a, a big name university, but you you did some vetting and said, okay, look, I'm, I want to go to law school, but to Logan's point earlier, you didn't try to the tune of whatever the premiums are for that school. You tried and you wanted to see what it was like while you were in community college. And you did internships and you said, you know what, I really think this field or this industry is for me. And meanwhile, there was a lower cost means of actually vetting that interest and saying, okay, now I'm going to move on to the big university. Now I'm going to go get the degree from the big name because I need to be recognized. And in, I'm sure, you know, single digit percentage cases, does it really matter with a prospective employer to say, okay, I have X candidate or Y candidate and they went to different schools. They both are all sane and, and doing the right things. They've all, but you know what? Now it's the school that's determining because the, the level, the, the playing field's level, except one went to school A, one went to school B. I mean, how many times does that really make a difference? It can matter if you're working in a very specialized group. I want to be a diplomat. Well, then you better go to Georgetown. Oh, I want to be in medicine. Well, Harvard is a pretty good place to start, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I, my goal was to be a physician. Why did I not? Because at Pierce College, my first year, chemistry said, oh, Arif, you're probably not meant for medicine. <laughs> I love biology. I love learning. I was curious, all of those things. But where I wasn't good at was in the lab work. And chemistry, after my second time of getting a courtesy C, <laughs> right, the professor said, listen, if you promise to never take chemistry again, I'll give you a C. <laughs> I got an A the first semester. The second semester, my lab work was all over the place. And he said, that you're just not precise enough for medicine. Hmm. So, wow, okay. Well, it was nice to learn that when you were in a position of being, you know, spending, I think it was $50 a semester back then. Wow. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't anything compared yeah. to now. But my parents didn't save for college. That's not what they did. They were, they were busy trying to rescue people from, uh, from Middle Eastern wars. Imagine that. Hmm. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, where's your priorities with your family? Keep in mind that you're going to be looking at especially if you're more than one child, you're going to be looking at costs that are going to go up every year. I don't know what happens. What happens when we were having deflation? In other words, wage pressure wasn't increasing. Utilities weren't increasing. Taxes weren't, property taxes were not increasing. And yet schools were still, were still raising tuition. Why? Because I think it's a phony priced product. I think if you take away all of this, I'm black, white, gay, straight, transvestite, sexual, whatever they call them, right? I'm, I'm none of those things. I'm not going to get uh, a, a scholarship just because I exist or something I couldn't control. But instead, colleges say, here's the price. Just like if I walk in to buy shoes, right? If I walk in to buy shoes and, and a Chinese person or an African-American person or a Latino walks in to buy shoes, they're not going to give them a lower price or me a, a lower price. It should be this is the price of shoes. Why don't we do that with education? If you do that, now people can really compare. But instead, it's, it feels like you're buying a used car. I'll give you this one for 12000 off because we need to check the box that you are a female uh, African-American you know, with one leg and you hop backwards. You are so right, Arif. And if we look at you know, how people rail against discrimination and there's all this tension between these dividing lines, yet when it comes to a, a commodity, right, an education, which it really is. I mean, look, it's, it's, you can you get, can it, get anywhere. it anywhere now. Right, just, right. Like, just like shoes. We would, we would 
protest, boycott, we'd be picketing That's in front right. of any store that said, hey, for this race, it's this price. For this race, it's that price. We'd probably... Well, you know, listen, they, Jeff, they might risk you're burning the place down. You're underprivileged. You, you know, you only have four pairs of shoes and I have seven. So it's it's not fair. So you should well. I, this is make believe. I might have more than seven <laughs> pairs of shoes. Let's say is this uh, pretend? This or? is pretend because <laughs> we're not talking about just what I took on this trip. Okay. But you know because part of this, guys, is enough is enough. Come on. This is a this is not a cost of something that's small. This is a this is an enormous expense, and for some people, it is the most expensive thing they may ever buy. Because when you add a 50000 what was it, $55,000 expense in college, which today is well over 300000 that's 300000 Who's going to get that money? And now this man is 61 years old. You tell me what happens next if you listen to one of our previous shows. Oh, wait, I will tell you. You try to apply for Social Security and you didn't... Guess who is the collection agency about... Five years ago or so, President Obama signed a deal that said the IRS is now the collection agency for all of your student loans. What? And so what kind of powers do the IRS have? Well, do you understand that they have more powers than most federal a any federal agency? I would say so. They, they control can, the money. They walk in. You can be a liquor store, a dry cleaner, it doesn't matter. They can walk into your business, stop everything, take over act as the employee and as people come to buy things they ring it up on the cash register and put the money in their pocket hmm. they can and they do do that regularly they're doing it now across the, the country the state especially they put their hand in the till because they say you owe us you're like oh I only have this much well that's okay you have inventory we'll sit here <laughs> and literally they have somebody behind the counter they ring it up they take the money they go oh, we're going to give you credit for $2.94 they put it in their pocket what, who else has that power? You can't expect the sheriffs or the police departments to do that. Certainly building inspectors can't. Certainly the, the FBI cannot. But the IRS can. And we signed a deal by electing our former president to go in, take your student loan money, and it is now subject to Social Security being attached. The, the safety net, the reason Social Security exists so you wouldn't be on the streets. Mm -hmm. It wasn't designed to replace anything. It was designed to be about a third or so of your income. And now this man, if he doesn't pay this back, according to the CNBC article, the next step is the IRS attaching his wages. And if he doesn't have wages, it doesn't matter because they will go into his Social Security payment. Now look, they, they can't take... They can't make your payment less than $750. Oh, joy. So let's say your payment is $2,000. They can take all of it down to seven fifty. dollars I think, is the number. Well, you'll pay it off faster if there's any silver lining. Yeah, and listen, you can always live in Panama or Costa Rica or someplace for seven fifty dollars a month, probably pretty well. Yeah, not bad. Especially if you take your own, you know, clothes. <laughs> Gee whiz. Well, and, and in this example you're citing, here's a guy who in the 90s thought it would be probably uh, in his best interest to, to go to school, to go to law school. Now, what do people uh, tell their kids? Be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a doctor. You know, you want to make a lot of money, be a doctor, be a lawyer. This guy says, okay, I'm going to be a lawyer. And he goes through school, and now this happens on the other side. So something that was unforeseen, uncontrollable on the other side of his educational experience, right, his college experience, he's got all the debt, and then on the other side, there's no promise of a job. And I think that's the disconnect people have, as we were saying in the first part of the program, is you have to really look at this as, is the other side of the equation viable? Can I afford to have that master's degree and be a teacher and make $36,000 a year? You have to decide. Here's Debbie Baker, took out a $35,000 in federal student loans while at the University of Tulsa in the 1990s. She wanted to be a music teacher in Oklahoma public schools. Of course, Oklahoma, one of the highest paid public schools, not. <laughs> Right? Try being a police officer or school teacher in Oklahoma. You wow. Not, so she made $27,000 a year, and her bill was $500 a month. She couldn't afford $500 a month. Right? Do the math. $27,000 after payroll taxes, after workers' comp, all the fees, you're prob and income tax. You're probably somewhere, what is it, eight times? You're probably around $17,000, so maybe $1,500 a month. And they're going to take a third of what she makes for the next 10 or 20 years. 
music teacher. So here's what you do. You go to the University of Oklahoma or whatever this is. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. University of Tulsa. And you say, hey, listen, you think a music degree is something you're going to offer? That's amazing. That's great. You have two choices. Either the Miss Baker comes in and she writes a check for that money each and every month, so she pays it, no loans. Or University of Tulsa, you think you're so awesome and so bad, so cool, so amazing at that. You're, you are it in that career. University of Tulsa, you write the check. You, you think you are creating an amazing product. You are now vested and invested in this young lady. Sure. The only way I th So the United States government, every year, every two years, five years, whatever, here are the limited budget. Here is, uh, is the area that we are going to give student loans. STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. But, but my daughter is amazing, you know, cello player. I know. So collect money from your friends and family. Work a second job. <laughs> Tell her no. Yep. I'm sorry. Sometimes, it, sometimes no is the answer, you guys. Just because Susie or Jimmy is an amazing young artist, they don't get to walk into Cal Arts. You have to audition. You don't get to go into Juilliard. If Juilliard says you are an amazing musician. You're going to make records. You're going to, to bring uh, peace throughout the world. Great. Juilliard writes the check. Hmm. And now if I can afford to go, but you can't, well, then Juilliard says we're going to take, you know, 50% of the people that can afford and 50% we're going to find, or we can only finance 18 students this year. So you're going to compete. But Eric, what will happen to those schools that just live and, and breathe and, and take from the government coffer. I'm just going to use a cow term. Take from the government coffer. How do they do that? Sorry, you go to business. Yeah. Sorry, school. You, you follow the, the likes of ITT Tech, it's, right? It's back to economics 101 is when you have supply versus demand. If the demand is there and the supply is going where you can go finance as many students as you want because Mr. Federal Government's writing the checks for the student loans, mm -hmm. suddenly the quality of the education doesn't matter as much, how viable it is for a job later on. Yeah, there's no risk to the, to the sure. school. The school passes, you know, how many athletes, how many basketball, football players, athletes get a college degree in whatever and cannot even read? Try to, try to speak to somebody who's got a degree in communications. They use the word like every other, t every other word. Uh, like, um, well, you know, like uh, somebody came into my office for an interview. She was very well dressed. Her resume was amazing. Presented herself well. And every third word was like. You remember this, Chef? I do. Yeah, Jeff and I interviewed her. Quite disappointing, I have to tell you. Yeah, we, we both looked at this resume. We said she would be perfect for our firm. Mm -hmm. So I... So then we thought, well, you know, she was being interviewed with two guys. We thought maybe there was an, uh, there was an intimidation thing, right? I was buying into your old, uh, you know, war against woman ideas, guys. So we said, you know, maybe two guys interviewed, but, you know, me and my assistant, uh, you know, vice president, we had to take a look. So we're going to interview her. We're going to give her a second chance. So we called her back for a second interview, I don't know, maybe a week or two later. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe it was a nervousness. Get her a chance to settle in a little bit. Same thing. Same thing, except this time she, she showed up with a, with a skirt all the way up to there, or a dress, I don't know what it was, on a glass table. That was coincidental, Eric. And it was coincidental. Yeah. And we thought, number one is, this is a little dangerous. Truly. And we thought, she spent money on this education. Yeah. Somebody is going to pay this. Because we wouldn't hire her for a marketing director position. Well, that's the face of your company. I mean, she's like the face of your company. Like, totally. I couldn't believe it. So, totally. We're going to be back in just a minute. As we continue, like with the Total Financial Hour, I'm Eric Hallaby. <laughs> that's Jeff Gerard on your place for news, talk, and information. And Logan Hallaby as well. You guys know him. We're going to be here. Uh, we're going to be back in just a minute as we continue with student loan debt. Listen, part of the reason there's a problem is you don't understand basic math. We're going to get into the, what's called the Rule of 72. That'll help you understand it. It's basic. I'm Eric Hallaby. We'll be right back on your place for news, talk, and information. Your hometown station, KHTS. I know the drill. Happy wife, happy life. That's why when she picked the flooring, paint, and cabinets, I simply said, yes, dear. But the home theater, now that's my domain. 
During the month of May, Party Homes is offering a home smart theater system including a 72-inch smart TV with the purchase of any new home at Arista, Cresta, or Verano at Aliendo. Don't wait! Special ends May 31st. Visit partyhomes.com slash homesmartevent for details. And now, a cooking tip from Keith Mowry of Bob's Country Meats. Cooking brisket is simple, whether you do it in the oven or on the grill. Okay, briskets come out nice. You want to brown them up real good on the barbecue over medium heat. Season them up however you like. Um, wrap them in foil. Put them on the other side. Go down to a low temperature, low heat, and let that go for about two and a half, three hours, just on low with the lid closed. For the tastiest brisket in town, visit Bob's Country Meats on Soledad in Canyon Country. Tucked away in Canyon Country is an upscale, intimate, unforgettable dining experience. Taste the wonders of Italy at Piccola Trattoria. This gym of a restaurant is our valley's best kept secret, but not for long. The secret will be out once you've tasted their homemade pastas, pizzas, asabuco, or their scrumptious sausage, fresh seafood or steaks. Better save room for dessert. Your table will be fighting over who gets the final bite of their heavenly tiramisu. Piccola Trattoria, off Sierra Highway on Dolan Way, your unforgettable dining experience. The College of the Canyons Nursing Program will be hosting a BSN Information Night on May 9th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. in the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center. Looking to get into the nursing field? Want to earn your Bachelor's of Science in Nursing? Representatives from various colleges will be outlining their BSN programs and students will be sharing their experiences. Pathways for concurrent enrollment and registered nurse to BSN programs will be covered. All are welcome. Visit canyons.edu slash nursing for details. At Discovery Cube Los Angeles, every day is an adventure. LA's newest science center brings education to life, and let's guess climb on a rock wall, soar over California in a simulated helicopter, or score a goal against an LA Kings hockey player. It's like a theme park for the mind. And beginning May 26th, take a bite out of Dino Summer with your prehistoric pass to the new Dinosaurs Around the World exhibit. All at Discovery Cube Los Angeles. Get your tickets now at la.discoverycube.org. First impressions say it all. Choosing the right makeup is critical to that first impression and keeping your skin looking young and healthy. That's why Santa Clarita's Jen Gerard created Gerard Cosmetics. Inspired by women of all ages who gravitate toward classic and timeless beauty with a modern twist, Gerard Cosmetics. Superb quality and pigmentation, along with lip glosses and lipsticks in colors for everyone. The internationally acclaimed Gerard Cosmetics. Discover your new look at GerardCosmetics.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Your hometown station. Thanks for listening to your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. Hey, welcome back to the show, The Total Financial Hour. I'm Eric Hallaby. That's Logan Hallaby and Jeff Gerard on your place for news, talk, and information. KHTS, your hometown station. Uh, folks, one of the things that I want you to do is to always pay attention to the truth, to the facts. Now, you might say, oh, well, everybody has facts. Okay, uh, that's fair, right? We have different ways of seeing things. I'm okay with that. You think blue is better than green. I think red is better than purple. I get it. We can do that. But don't call red green or blue purple. Don't... Don't make those mistakes unless you're colorblind. Hmm. And if you remember our interview last week with Alveda King, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's niece, and if you didn't catch that interview, I encourage you to go back to our Facebook page uh, and listen to her speak. What an amazing opportunity to hear somebody with one history. That to me was just pretty incredible to, to be that close to history. And listen to what she says, Dr. Martin Luther King and her father, uh, A.D. King, Dr. A.D. King. Listen to what they were doing just before Dr. Martin Luther King got into uh, an argument with Jesse Jackson. Hmm. And he said, uh, she, uh, Dr. Uh, Alveda King, said she had never heard Martin Luther King in an argument. And the one documented time that he was in an argument with Je Jesse Jackson. And it was pretty incredible. Dr. Martin Luther King wanted more peaceful Jesse Jackson wanted more of a violent uprising, if you will, or, or more of a meeting resistance, with resistance, I guess, physical. And they were arguing what was going to be better, which way or the other way. 
and they agreed to just settle down a little bit and Dr. Martin Luther King went out onto the balcony and that's when he was shot. But just before that, before him and Jesse Jackson got in an argument, he was in a pillow fight with her father. <laughs> Why am I sharing this with you as a repeat? How much tuition did that cost you? What it, what's that monthly payment going to be on that student loan? Nothing. Because you understand that information, knowledge, being next to history is not about writing a check. That's the easy way. Send your kids to college. I want them to have the experience. Listen, I was a police officer around Cal State Northridge and around UCLA for years in both cases, more than a year in each case. I can tell you between the crimes that were reported, between the things that I would see on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, you need to think twice about the college experience. Your experience is not going to be your child's. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But don't think you're buying some sort of holistic Mayberry college experience. Folks, it's not the same. At least it wasn't when I was there. And today it's even different, even more different. So understand that the reason you're sending your child to college, and I'm sending my youngest, he's, he's the last one to go. And he starts in a few weeks, I guess, a month or two. Wasn't so that he could go find information that didn't exist anywhere else. He's not going to do that. That's not what university is about anymore. He's going to the university for one reason. It's because the other people at the university are now going to be his peers. He's now going to create lifelong relationships at a much higher level. He's now going to have a chance to, to fine tune and, and caress and maybe change and maybe develop his ideas and thoughts. Not to be parroted back, 92% of college professors are liberal. That, that, that they're Democrats. They vote. What if 92% were black? 92% were Jewish? 92% were white? 92% were male? You would say, oh, that's not diversity. Well, I don't care what you look like. Diversity of thought is what controls actions, not your, not your appearance, not your belief in, in who God is. So be very careful where you are sending your child off to school. They are taught there to not just question you, but in some cases to dislike and even hate you for what you stand for. Many people this Thanksgiving are going to be surprised when their child returns. Because colleges with this level of hate towards one human being, the president, if you haven't figured that out, the level of hate that university professors and students have for no reason. Oh, here, if you don't understand, I heard that uh, Access Hollywood tape. Why don't you go back and listen to the tape? Don't let somebody tell you what was on there. Don't let me tell you what was on there. Just go back and listen to it. You'll be disgusted like I was. But it's different than the New York Attorney General, a prominent Democrat. It's different than Anthony Weiner, mm -hmm. prominent Democrat. It's different than Bill Clinton, prominent Democrat. And the sexual assault, the rape, the stuff they were doing to, to women that were in their, in their charge, if you will, right? Subordinates, some, I mean, you, you understand there's disgusting behavior and then there's there's illegal and disgusting behavior. You don't have to agree with I don't agree with everything my wife does and I'm married to her. You shouldn't agree with anybody 100%. That'd be weird. Even twins disagree. <laughs> so be very careful. When you send your children off to school, folks, we did it so that my, my son would go to a university and come back challenging arguments but still respecting our home. Challenging our discussions, but still respecting God. Building a person and a character whose beliefs are his own. And not what a professor of any particular, I don't know, political persuasion. It doesn't matter to me. Right? So you're sending them to school for a different reason. The college experience, you guys, is real dangerous. Ask anybody who's got a 25 or 28-year-old. Ask them uh, what they would change. Because the kid isn't getting a different job. They work at Starbucks. They work at JCPenney's. They work at Sears. And, and you cannot not find a job right now. You want to work? There's work. 
Unemployment is at all time lows. I have friends who who have help wanted signs up, and they're not help wanted signs for a janitor. These are help wanted signs for skilled positions. They said we'll train you, engineering, aerospace, mathematics. Oh, here if I have my degree in music, go back to school, go take two more years. You already have your degree. Go back to school. Go to community college. Take take uh, calculus. Take physics. Whatever it is. And now that degree will get you a, d a job, but your skill set and your personality. A friend of mine, Jeff, said this, and I thought it was great. Listen, people get jobs for their resume. Yeah. That's, that's how they get hired. But they're fired for who they are. Hmm. Very interesting. Because they can't get along with others, because of their personality, because of their work ethic, their character, their, their integrity. You can't always see that on a piece of paper. You can't. Isn't it interesting that we're interviewing for the wrong things? Do you know this computer? Yeah. You, you know this skill set? Yeah. We should be asking about fever. We should be asking about integrity, about curiosity, about your ability to work hard, about your ability to work when nobody's looking, right? Those are the things we should be asking. I, I don't know how to do that. It's not my field, but I just know that when you're sitting down with somebody, people are less likely to want to hire you if you're a jerk, right? If your appearance isn't kept, if you don't understand some basics about human behavior, if you don't understand the basics about what you're supposed to look like, I, I don't mean, right, if I went to work in a mechanic shop with a suit and tie or even to Google in a suit and tie, I would be probably laughed at, right? <laughs> sure. So that's not the uniform for there. That's my uniform. Mm -hmm. Just like if you, you know, rolled in a skateboard and a scooter and, and ate your j jelly beans with your little backpack on and came scooting through my office. You'd, I'd just open the back door and let you keep on going <laughs> and out in railroad. <laughs> so well, part you'd, of you'd hurt my feelings, though. I just want you to know that. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. And we're done. See how quick that? <laughs> yeah, see how quickly quick. we got over that? You know, it's not just universities where this is happening. <clears throat> you know, I'll share a little experience that I've had. My, you talk about the hate for one person. That is permeating throughout just about every level of education, at least in, in my world, in my circle. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a disgusting thing. You know, it, it takes a little bit of the, the, the faith you have, the, the trust that you put. You, know, you send your kids off to a school, whether it's you know, your property taxes pay for it or you write the check. You're sending your kids and you're entrusting part of their upbringing and, and hope to not be undermined by other adults, educated yeah. adults, for six, seven hours a day. You hope for that. But that's not the case. Let me tell you what's happened with that level of thinking. I just got back from San Francisco at a conference, a very beautiful city. I forget how beautiful it is. It's only like my third or fourth time there. And I forget how beautiful it is. But let me tell you something. I have never seen the depth of filth. Literally, you guys, I have pictures. Hypodermic needles everywhere. Hmm. This house is 15 million. Out front, a guy defecating. Oh, this is a beautiful, this is where Larry Ellison lives, one block away. You have homelessness and people urinating. You have uh, gloves, used hypodermic needles everywhere. I mean, it, the smell of marijuana was uh, everywhere. You couldn't walk a half a block. We tested it. We walked a half a block. After half a block, you were smelling marijuana somewhere. I don't know what liberal policies think they're going to do to the state of California, but if you want to see what it would be like five or ten years from now if we continue down this road, just go to San Francisco and walk around. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean like the, ooh, the bad neighborhoods. We were in Knob Hill. We were in uh, the Market Street. We were uh, all over the place. Yeah. You just have to walk around. Mission District. It's no big deal. Be very careful what you wish for and protect your children. You only get one chance to be their parent before 18. After that, it's their choice if they want to be involved in your life. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Arif Hallaby. That's Jeff Gerard and Logan Hallaby. We'll talk to you next week on your place for news, talk, and information on AM 1220, KHS.